So today I'm going to talk about what is macroeconomics. A lot of times students wind up in a class, they don't actually know what they signed up for, they were told to for some degree or some advisor said you got to take macro, come into class, have no idea what they're getting into until the first day. So my big thing is to explain actually what macroeconomics is and why we use it, right? It turns out to be a really interesting course, really useful for the stuff people do like all the time in life. So taking macro actually pays for itself in terms of what you learn and how you can use it, you know, when making economic decisions, right? So first of all, you got to back up. You got to say, what is economics? So macroeconomics is one of two sort of branches of econ, right? There's micro and there's macro. Economics in general in like one sentence is it's, how to um, efficiently allocate scarce resources. It's how to make the best decisions when you have limited things to go around, decide who gets what, who makes what, basically how to put your resources to make people best as best off as possible, right? So that's economics, right? Optimal allocation of scarce resources, right? So in the micro side, a lot of times that's individual level, right? People are, you're looking at individual consumers, individual firms, people making their best decision just for themselves or maybe um, for their business and so forth for their family. That looks at things on how to actually measure the well-being, or it looks at how specific uh, products work. So in, in economics in general, right, scarce resources get allocated through the price, right? So you spend a lot of time talking about this, you know, supply and demand and how, how the price determines who makes what and who gets what. But in a micro class, you'll look at that in much more detail because, right, the, the response could be different depending on the product. You could be looking at types of firm and competitiveness in firms. You could be looking at international trade, anything that is individual based. Right? But macroeconomics is national based, usually for a country because countries have the things that uh, you can use as, as economic tools. Right? So countries might have their own money or countries might have their own measurements of, of performance. Right? So traditionally when it was invented, uh, macroeconomics was completely separate from micro, but over time because countries are made up of individual people, it, uh, academic macro tends to be built on, on micro and all the individual decisions. Right? But what does macro look at? Okay? Okay. Macroeconomics tends to look at national level measures of, of production, right? You want to be producing more than you had in the past and, and so that your citizens are better off. Be looking at prices, basically how prices rise over time or how to keep them from rising too quickly. We talk about inflation, and that was actually a big topic in 2023. We talk about unemployment because people out of work is obviously a huge problem for a country. And this all ties together with the price and macroeconomics, which is the interest rate. So the interest rate could be like the price of capital, it's the price of borrowing money. It's what you get for saving money. But if you change the price, that encourages people to borrow and invest and do all sorts of things. So the interest rate is the number one price in macroeconomics, just like a regular price is uh, big for all of economics. Right? So macroeconomics looks at the country level. It looks at specific measures of production and prices and unemployment, and it has its own price. Now, I do a lot of international macroeconomics, and there's a price of like the dollar overseas. We can talk about exchange rates. We can talk about how their connections abroad, but if you just take a basic macro class, it's going to be looking at um, production and unemployment and prices and Federal Reserve policy setting interest rates. Those are the things you're going to look at. Now, a lot of people, when they major in economics, they really like micro because it looks at all, all sorts of uh, interesting topics and the labor market and so forth, but a lot of people start out thinking about macroeconomics, right? Everybody spends money. They want to know how money works. Sometimes people look at uh, alternative investments. You can look at virtual currencies. People, have a, uh, people want to invest in all sorts of things things, whether it's traditional stocks and bonds, all the way up to things that were just invented recently. That's macro, right? Macro uses interest rates. Macro uses money. Countries have their own money, which is why we tend to think about what countries can do. Money is a huge part of macroeconomics. Uh, and also everybody borrows. A lot of people save. And most people in America, at least, like to buy a house, right? Or you buy a car. You're going to be borrowing money. You're going to be paying interest. So, uh, a lot of the things people deal with in every life are actually in everyday life are actually macroeconomic topics. Right? So understanding that does help you buy a house in a way that saves you money. It helps you buy a car in a way that's favorable to you. Um, helps you save for your retirement. Um, helps you make all these decisions that are based on interest rates. All right, and so th there's a huge you know use to macro, but traditionally a lot of people think it's a lot less fun because it's a lot more abstract, right? In 2023, inflation was high. That meant prices were rising at a faster rate than normal. That was huge for people, right? So everybody was talking about inflation. That's a macro topic that used to bore people. Now it's affecting whether it's you eat at a restaurant or not, or it's affecting your investment, it's affecting your future, your savings account. 
inflation sounds boring, but it's actually really drives your life, right? So those things like inflation and interest rates are the things that people really face when they're borrowing money for all sorts of things or they're deciding where to invest. So that's why we do macro. That's why it's interesting because it, it, it has a huge effect on everyday investment. Right. So if you keep in mind what it's about, right, specific measurements of a national economy and potentially some connections between countries, and you think about where it gets used, right, anytime you borrow money, you're, you're facing the key macroeconomic price, then you can sort of see like why we study it and, and what the goals are, like what are, what's the benefit to understanding it. The better, the goal to understanding it beyond the class you're in is the fact that you can actually use what you know. And you could save $300 here, you could save thousands on a house, you can do all sorts of things with it that really make it worthwhile from a practical sense, right? So that's what macro is, and hopefully if you're taking a macro course, you'll get a lot out of it. Uh, basically stick with it, even if it seems abstract, it's worth the effort you put into it, because what you get out of it is good both academically in, in terms of your school and grades, but also in terms of this, this practical side of it.